Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Watchman. Here at The Cheap Watchman, we talk about high-value timepieces, and today we're talking about the Bulova Lunar Pilot. This new, smaller, blue one. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this li little blue Lunar Pilot. So the story goes, 1971, Dave Scott was wearing his Omega Speedmaster and it broke. And he had a prototype, a Bulova prototype, that didn't break. So he ended up wearing that one on the moon. Years later, that watch would go on to auction for over a million dollars. So Bulova, being smart, is like, hey, we should make that again. So they did. Problem was, it was a little bit bigger than most people can handle on their wrist. I think it was 44 millimeters, 45 millimeters. This one is slightly a smidge smaller at 43 and a half. And they now make it in a blue and a white dial, which actually I think is really cool because if you get right up on the dial, it kind of <laughs> looks like the moon. I've never been on the moon. I'm assuming it, it has texture. The moon surface has texture and it's pale. <laughs> I have been interested in this watch for a while and I have looked not this specific one because well it didn't exist but other variations on the lunar pilot I've had one saved in my cart on Amazon for quite a while they can go down to around $500 I've even seen them lower than $500 but not this one because this one is the new one and it comes in at $895 However, I got this one off of Bulova's website with 10% off, so it came in around $800 and change. I was a little bit hesitant about this because this is a quartz watch, and I'm a bit of a mechanical watch snob. Although, I do have a couple of G-Shocks. And the Moon Swatch. Actually, let's get a look at these. Let's get a look at these two together. Moon Swatch versus Lunar Pilot. That's what they look like together. So even the smaller size of the Lunar Pilot you can see is quite a bit bigger than the Moon Swatch, which to my understanding is a one-to-one -one reproduction of the Speedmaster. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist and it's perfect on me. $800. I think it's worth every penny. Let's take a closer look. The star of the show, easily for me, is the dial on here. So I'll show you some pictures from outside or some video. The dial has a bit of a rough texture. So it is not smooth and it's not flat. And if anything, it looks again like the moon. So it's kind of not even a white, it's like a grayish white. There's applied indexes, rectangle at the 12 o'clock, longer batons at 5, 10, 20, 25, little rectangle at six, little rectangle at nine, a little rectangle at three. Now you will see the hand up here is a little bit off. You can adjust it. What you have to do is pull this out right here and then you press this once and watch it and it'll move just a second. The problem is when you adjust it, now I'm gonna have to do it all the way around. When you adjust it, it's about five pushes per second. So I'm no mathematician. But that's a lot of pushes around the edge. And then around the periphery of the dial, there is a minute track. And the dial actually sits on top of the minute track, which is one of the things that I love about this watch is depth. So really, if we look at the edge here, we have the tachometer with all the numbers and all that good stuff. And then interior of that, we have this minute track, which is like this kind of reflecty silver. It's definitely a different color than the dial. And then you have the dial, which is textured. And then on top of that, you have the indices, which are blue applied. And they're raised up off the dial even more. Then you have your minute, your seconds, and your tenth of a second's dials within that. Then you have a beautiful handset. There is so much going on with this watch that it just pulls you in. There's so much depth, and I love it. And it really feels like a much more expensive watch. I think my Omega Seamaster 300 has similar kind of layering. I think the Bulova has a little bit more going on. I'm not saying that this is the same quality as the Omega. What I'm saying is there's a similar tangibility of the dial. There's a similar depth structure on the dial. I don't love the way the Bulova is just written up there. It would have been cooler if there's something applied. But I'm really, really splitting hairs because this thing is spectacular and it's way more impressive in person. If I'm really picking this thing apart, 
some of the applied indexes are not exactly perfectly lined up. Having to adjust the seconds hand because it doesn't always, it doesn't always come back perfectly. So this will be the second time I've had to adjust this and I'm probably not going to adjust it again. It seems like it drifts ever so slightly to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so it's ever so slightly to the left. So when I'm playing around, when I stop it, it'll kind of go back to where it's supposed to go. Here's the thing. It's not like I'm even going to be using this. I did use it to work out one time. So I turned it on and quite frankly, it was a bit of a pain because I was looking at minutes elapsed and it was hard to see. As you can see, it's, it's definitely over the right now, but I did pull it out and adjusted it a little bit. The bracelet is very, 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 very good. You can see it is brushed on the outside. So it's three links brushed on the outside, polished on the inside. And then right here, oops, double deployment class, bear, bear. It's very nice. Uh, I would say this, this bracelet is, let's see. Not on par with my Air King, which I didn't buy. My dad bought it for me. Definitely better than I have a Squally 1545 that came in around $600 when I got it. Definitely better than that one from a finishing standpoint. Their edges aren't rough. None, no rough edges on this. Really well done. It's, it's in line with the price. When you handle this bracelet, it feels like an $800 watch. There's some heft to this thing too, which is another reason why I love it. Also comes with a leather NATO strap, a blue one. And the bracelet has a quick release, so you can get it off there very quickly if you want to. I'm usually not one for unboxings, but I figured I'd show this to you considering this is, well, an $800 watch. And again, I think this is worth every penny of $800. If it starts to come down like the previous Lunar Pilot, if this comes down like $500, don't even think about it. If this watch, the new Lunar Pilot, comes down to $600, $550 or something, it is absolutely worth it. I think I think they probably could have got away with charging maybe $1,100 for this thing and still been okay. It still would have sold. And I wouldn't have felt like I got ripped off either. So it comes with this box inside. Yay! Look at that. Full of a tuning fork. Here's your uh, blue leather NATO. So this is what it looks like on the leather NATO-ish strap. And I didn't know how I'd feel about the leather NATO strap, but it actually, it looks it looks really good. This is a really cool watch. I think what you're getting here is you're getting a bunch of history. You're getting an extremely interesting dial. You're getting a movement at 262 kilohertz, which is a very, very quick, high beat quartz movement. Super accurate if you're into accuracy. But if you're into mechanical watches, you're probably not really into accuracy all that much. Great finishing, two bracelets, and a company that I really feel like, I don't know if I'd say it's on the rise or not, but I will tell you this, I'm way more interested in Bulova now since I've seen how good this watch is. So I'm more apt to look at something like the pre 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 Precisionist. Precisionist, which is a high beat quartz, which looks like an automatic watch with the sweeping second hand. So I'm more apt to take a look at Bulova now than I was before. If you look at the pushers on the side, an iridescent blue, very large, just a cool watch, really cool watch. Obviously not a perfect watch. There's some slight indices that are off that aren't lined up perfectly. I'm gonna have to adjust the seconds hand again. This thing is fun to wear and it's kind of big. It has some presence. And it's just so incredibly interesting to look at. I think this colorway came out because of the Omega Snoopy Speedmaster series. But I had been on the fence about this for over a year. And as soon as I saw this dial come out, I hit buy now. Bye, 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 bye. One of my favorite watches in my collection right now. And I do have an Omega. I do have a Tudor. I do have a Rolex. But I really feel like this one kind of, this bull of a Lunar Pilot is not embarrassed to sit in the watch box right next to those heavy hitters. Love it. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for my Patreon. I also have another YouTube channel. It's called The Cheap Audio Man. I'll link it in the description. You can click on that link and go check it out. I'll link this. I don't think it's going to be an affiliate link because I don't think these are being sold on Amazon yet. Really go check it out. And I think even if you have a smaller wrist, less than seven inches, you're probably still going to be able to make this one work. It's still a big watch. 43 and a half millimeters, but it wears fairly well. The lug to lug isn't super long. Really spectacular watch. 
So please, if you're new here, subscribe and like this video, I'm trying to get this channel off the ground. So don't worry about how much your watches cost. Buy what you can afford and enjoy every minute of it. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap watchman. I almost said cheap audio man. Cheap watchman.